Dr. Dan Bachman here. Figured I'd give you a quick walk and talk update here. So I just finished uh, round nine of chemo. Spent five or six hours in the clinic, just got home. And uh, as is my custom, I like to get out and move, <laughs> get a little sunshine, cause you just kind of feel crappy uh, during and after the chemo. Um, I slept through a couple hours of it today. <clears throat> and just to put that in perspective, basically I have, some of you have asked what this is like. So I have essentially a good week, bad week, good week, bad week, and so on. Because my chemo is every two weeks. The first week of the chemo is where I have the worst symptoms. Like today I've immediately gotten the fingertip lightning bolts. Uh, anything remotely cold. So I stopped at the grocery store and just walking through the produ produce section was giving me zappy fingertip pain. Breathing cold air makes my throat feel like it wants to close off. That may be the most annoying thing because I can't drink for that week, the first, the bad week, I have to heat all of my liquids before I drink them or it feels like I'm going to choke. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> I'm assured that I won't actually choke, but man, does it not feel good. It feels like you can't get things down, like your throat closes off, and just cool water will do that. And it also changes the taste and the texture, it feels like. So water feels like thin mud that you never can quite swallow all of it. And the taste is, I don't know what to describe it like, but the taste is definitely not what I would expect water to taste like so anyway uh, i have been trying some some uh alkal alkaline water so it's where it's a little more basic than acidic and actually a good friend of mine sherry brought me a couple of jugs and while i have not even researched this at all um, I have heard various things about alkaline water and its benefits, so I figured I'd give it a try. Well, the main thing I noticed is my mouth ulcers that I typically get weren't nearly as bad this time. Um, actually, my nosebleeds weren't as bad either. So, don't know if that's from the alkaline water or the extra exercise I'm doing. Hard to say, but hey, yeah, I may continue it. Um, also, I have, I met with my oncologist today for the first time in a month. So the plan is, she said, we want to get CT scan immediately, which would be round three of scans to check tumor size. Oh yeah, there's my, here's my little setup here. So another round of CT scans. Last ones were two months ago. Everything shrunk 30 to 50%. So we're going to cross our fingers and see if that happens again and if so how much and she also wants me to schedule an appointment with my surgeon so we can get on the books for him because she's saying it's looking like we may have beat down all the little littler tumors enough to where it's time to get the the bowel resection done <clears throat> and who knows that could be this year i mean today is october 19th i believe so hey if we can knock it out this year and i could be recovering into next year that'd be awesome and then there'll probably be some after surgery it's it's not just one surgery it's they take out the primary tumor in my colon by removing my rectum completely reattach that end they may or may not be doing surgery on my liver which will probably be a separate surgery uh it depends on how big the spots are, their location. Are they right next to an artery? Well, maybe we won't cut around there. Um, and then things that we can't cut out that are still threats, um, radiation may be an approach there. So, because they've, they've gotten really good <clears throat> at radiation therapy, they can focus like a laser on a very small little spot so that they're not, you know, irradiating and harming the tissue around it any more than they actually have to so um oh new thing 
in the last week I started running. Now, not, I wouldn't even call it running, I'd call it jogging and not continuous, but I go on my hikes. This is hike number four out of the last five days and I'll jog sections of it. So basically I'll jog until I'm kind of out of breath, slow to a walk, jog some more. And that feels really good. My body feels really good jogging. I ha understand I have not run more than two steps in over a year. And I'm a beach volleyball player. That's my thing. I want to get to explosive, high impact, 100% output, jumping, diving, contorting myself in the air, pounding balls down on the other side. That's the thing I'm most excited about getting back to. So, <clears throat> so even one little step closer to that by being able to run feels pretty awesome. So, I think that may be the end of my update for today. Uh, a huge thank you to all of you who have taken the time to write and cheer me and encourage me and pray for me. It, what you do matters more than you know. It really does. I mean, I look around the chemo room at my oncologist's office and, you know, there's a wide mix of people there. It is a very diverse group, age-wise, uh, ethnicity-wise, stage of life, economic status. It's all over the place. And it's because cancer doesn't care. Doesn't care who you are or what your life prospects look like. If it has the environment and it gets a foot in the door, it can make anyone's life a big problem. So what I've been trying to do is talk to at least two people in and around me when I'm going through chemo each time I'm there, just to kind of, I don't know, because no one typically talks in there. It's really quiet. And I feel like everybody is just sitting alone there in their own fear because they can't have get, they can't have family with them or anything. I just feel like they're just we're all just stewing in our own fear and our our foreboding about what's going to happen to us, or what we think might happen to us. So just a little, I try to crack some jokes and um, I don't know, just engage other people a little bit, and it seems to be well received so far. So, um, scans coming up ASAP. I'll, I'll update you guys on those. Oh, huge thing. So my, uh, let's see, it's called carcinoembryonic antigen or CEA blood test. Um, it's basically a test to see if you have tumors and normal people without cancer, the right score is zero to three that's what normal people can have a CEA reading of when I first came in and they tested my blood it was 168 so that's pretty emphatically saying there's tumor stuff happening the second time they did it it jumped down from 168 to 26 which is huge huge drop still way over zero to three well, the third time, I just got my blood work today. The third time they did the blood work, my CEA was nine. So it went from up and to the left, down and to the right, from 168 to 26 to nine. My oncologist was kind of shocked. She said, yeah, we can see people move down into the 20s, but they usually don't go any lower than that certainly not into the teens or the single digits so she said that's very encouraging as well all right i'm going to sign off with you all great to see you again thank you for all of your interaction and support i love you all very much and you have my best prayers and wishes good wishes and mojo and health vibes heading your way for you and yours love you guys